Well, hello. I want to welcome you to another exciting episode of Pens in Use. I apologize in advance for my voice. I'm getting over quite a cold. I'm one of those people that never get sick, but when I get sick, I get really sick. So I am recovering from that. So apologies for the voice. So let's dive into the pens. If videos like this interest you where I talk about fountain pens, both new and old and at all price points, I'd invite you to subscribe. And if something strikes your fancy here, please, please leave a comment. I'll uh, add some details later. I have some surprises coming. So let's take a look at what I have inked. And again, my voice is failing. That's usually the last stage whenever I have a cold. The voice goes, uh, and that follows a horrible coughing session. So yeah, the, the last few days have been all kinds of fun. So the first pen I have here is a Pilot uh, Parallel 2.4 millimeter. Uh, then I have a Caveco V14S, a Waterman Hemisphere with a fine point nib, a Wing Sunk 3008, a Caveco Lilliput, a Caveco 37G, a central pen, which we shall call a 100820. And then it's pencil companion and a central pen, 100. Sorry, I couldn't remember the number because I didn't write this one down. 14. Uh, there is a reason these last two are here. Because there's something special coming with those. So let's start with the pilot parallel. Now, uh, before a couple of you get upset, I, I've read those comments. You, know, you shouldn't write with a nib that broad when you're writing such small writing. Well, I'm trying to fit it into my format. Uh, this Pilot Parallel is going to really struggle to fit in my format. But uh, four of them came, and I had to ink up the broadest one. So <laughs> let's see how she does. Uh, as always, Boma Art Journal, but the flowery one is retired. I'm now on to the seafood version. Almost forgot. I should thank Chris Rap 52 that wonderful, I'll bring it back here, this thing, <laughs> the, the new pen tray, that's uh, from his encouragement, so uh, hopefully that'll give a more professional look to these videos. Alright, normally I would zoom in for my pens, but I don't think that's feasible for this first one. It is a long honking beast, it didn't even fit in the original uh, part of the video. Uh, this is a Pilot Parallel. I bought a set of four of them. This is the 2.4 millimeter nib. I just wrote today's date in it. Well, tomorrow's date because I'm filming this on a Thursday night. Um, I have been so curious about this pen for so long and uh, I actually had a lot of cash left over this fall. I got paid today on September 20th, so first time I've had a check since June, so Happy days, but uh, yeah, I had a lot of cash left over, so I splurged on a set of four of these. But, uh, you know, look at that. And now uh, I'll do, I don't know how I'm going to represent it. It doesn't fit the other pens. This is a unique beast. Uh, the nib, by the way, is... Two flat pieces of metal pressed together, but when you're writing that wide, what else are you going to do? I got that millimeter in. I don't care what you people say about me and my small writing. I fit it with a wide nib. Cheated, but I fit it. Of course, uh, with the death of my Lamy 2000 nib at the hard surface of my classroom floor, I've been using my Caveco V14S as my daily writer. This is definitely not a daily writer.
Uh, this isn't one of those pens that's really exciting. It's just one of those pens that's really good. And it plays into the surprise coming at the end of this video. Slim black pen of the 50s and 60s and 70s that I like. Um, no flex to the nib. It's just a good writer for those small spaces that I keep getting criticized for writing in. Uh, next on the list, I have my Waterman Hemisphere. Of course, that's always a wonderful pen. Uh, I, I uh, have it dedicated to only one ink, so you know if you see this pen, you know what ink is coming. Can you guess yet? It is the infamous Noodlers Base State Blue, which will never touch my Caveco V14S. This is an interesting, kind of fun ink, but it also stains, and uh, I like my Caveco. I don't want it stained, so it will remain in this pen. And, you know, I'm really surprised I like this pen, but I do. Now, I had a viewer, a couple of viewers, I guess, talk to me about Diamine ink a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I've honestly only used a little bit of it. So one viewer, I, I didn't ask permission to use his name, so I won't say his name, but you know who you are. Sent me two bottles of Diamine ink. Uh, this Wing Sunk 3008 is filled with one of those bottles. Well, part of one of those bottles. Uh, with Diamine Cult Pens Deep Dark Green. You have seen this pen in action before, but I had it filled with one of the, the uh, Sailor Storia inks. It was the yellow one, which... I don't know what the point of the yellow is. It was too bright. You couldn't make anything out. So, Wing Sung. Uh, I, I appreciate this kind of green. Uh, this is a fine nib. It's not quite the Sailor Epinart that I like, but uh, definitely an attractive shade of green. I like a Lilliput. Uh, the first time I got it, I uh, was disappointed. I thought, well, that fire polish should be brighter, but I've come to appreciate kind of the restraint. And I think a lot of the photos are doctored to make it just seem more extreme. That's a marketing thing. But it's a nice little pen, fits in my pocket. And I unscrew it and screw it on here, and you have a decently sized pen. Also of note, this is an ink which you've seen in a few of my reviews, because for some reason I have a box of cartridges of this, and I keep trying to use them up. Well, in a lot of the pens I've used it in, will grow all kinds of crusties right here on the nib. Not so on this pen. I have done no special effects, no preparation. There were just no crusties. So this pen provides a really good seal. Has a fine nib and the ink is diamine. Ancient copper. And when it behaves the way it does in this pen, I wouldn't mind a bottle. Oops, there's no S on copper. I wouldn't mind a bottle. I, I can see I'm tired because I can see in my writing that I'm tired. I write large when I'm tired and I write sloppy when I'm tired. I think it's the being sick because it's only 8.03 p.m. But uh, I, uh, I'm i pretty sure I'll be going to bed as soon as this is edited. I just, uh, <laughs> not a night person anyway, although 8.03 is too early for my bedtime. But yeah, I uh, prefer to record this earlier in the week when I can be more awake, but... Dang, that cold just did a number on me. Now here's an interesting pen. I haven't had this one out in a long time. This is a Caveco 37G with an extra fine nib with uh, an interesting ink in it.
I'm uh, exaggerating the flex a little bit just uh, so you can see it. Oh, I love that color. That maybe even a little closer to the Sailor Epinart that I like so much. But the nib, surprisingly flexible, the pen, the Scaveco 37G, just one of those understated plain black pens of the 60s and 70s and 50s that I like, with a really surprising nib. Uh, Caveco made some great pens. They, they still do. I mean, there's one right there. But... You know, I, it's it's almost like they lost their way for a while. They're still finding their way back. I guess the company, in fairness, did go out of business for a while, so there is that. Okay, I whoops, really shouldn't film these at night. All right, this next one is my beloved, on its third fill, Centro Pep 100820, which is the special feature tonight. Uh, you may have seen the little railroading there. i uh, not going to make excuses for the pen. You saw it. Uh, it railroads on this notebook. It, certain papers it seems to railroad on. Others, I, I just wrote a full page, and I'm not even joking, to a pen pal with this pen. Not a single railroad in sight on Tomoe River paper. So I think it picks and chooses the paper it wants to railroad on. But you saw it. It did it. But I want to look a little more closely at it for reasons. I want you to admire that beautiful celluloid. I mean, you can admire the gold too, but it's gold filled, not gold plated. This is gorgeous. I mean, it may not be the Omas Arco celluloid, but gorgeous. Uh, the nib. You've seen it before, an ISCO 14 karat 585. So through the magic of editing, I journeyed back upstairs because <laughs> I forgot my show notes. So let's take a look at those. I uh, Well, you're not going to look at them. I'm going to look at them. But uh, for many years, the Central Pen 100820, this one right here, which I guess I have to set it like this, should be over my shoulder there. Um, was my most expensive pen. In the present day, as of this filming, it's in the top three. It's at the bottom of the top three, but it's in the top three. I, uh, still surprised I spent this much money on a real gamble for a pen. But I have to say, this is a gamble that seriously paid off. This is a wonderful pen. Czechoslovakian pen, 1960s. Uh, last week in Pens and Use, I mentioned that MyOverPens.com had one for sale. And I'm happy to say, I don't have his permission to say his name, so I won't, but I'm happy to say one of my viewers purchased it. And I really can't wait to hear what he thinks of it. I, uh, I know I'm thrilled with mine. I, I'm still thrilled all these years later. So I'm, I'm excited to hear what he thinks. But anyway, <laughs> uh, sorry, this late night thing. What this pen did for me is it opened up the world of Central and Eastern European fountain pens. I had developed an interest, actually thanks to MyOverPens.com, I had developed an interest in um, some of those slim black pens in the 1960s, 70s, and 50s. Uh, specifically, there's a Reform 1320, which isn't down here, uh, but this Caveco V14S is one of the pens that really cemented that interest. But this pen and a Marcant, which was from Eastern Germany, cemented that interest in really Central Europe and Eastern Europe. 
So some of those Bulgarian and Russian pens that you've seen, and which I really need to get a review done, come right from here. Now, not a single one has ever compared to this pen. They haven't even come close. In fairness, not many of my pens of any kind have ever come close, new or old. But it has opened up a world to me, a world behind the Iron Curtain. Now, if you know my last name, my family heritage comes from behind the Iron Curtain. I'm Polish. Uh, my great-grandparents came over in the, well, 1920s or 30s. They, uh, well, there were reasons they came over. It was before communism, of course. Uh, it had to do with the Catholic Church. We'll just leave it there because I don't want to be controversial. But uh, they came to the United States, and uh, I'm not Catholic as a result, <laughs> if that tells you anything. But uh, what happened is there's a whole world there of pens that really often didn't make it to the Western market. And sometimes it's because, oh my God, what horrible pens. And sometimes it's just because of that whole Iron Curtain thing. So I really thank uh, MyUberPens.com for bringing this pen to my attention. So I wrote to MyUberPens.com this week when I just randomly, I don't even know why because I hate to admit this, but I spent some of that money I had saved on MyUberPens.com. Uh, but I went back there and I noticed this pen, this central pen and pencil once again for sale. So I'm going to do a special feature on that, and I wrote to myoberpens.com for permission. So this is going to be kind of a weird mix of screenshotting of uh, pens and so on, and we'll see how this turns out. The pen came with a companion pencil. I do not care for mechanical pencils. I went through a spell with mechanical pencils in high school, and then I haven't really touched them since. And this one, this mechanical pencil is... You know, the old style with the much thicker lead. Yes, you can still find it. A uh, very attractive mechanical pencil, I will give it that, but I just don't like writing with mechanical pencils. Uh, I showed you the Isco Nib, and this pen came in a nice communist red case. Oops, I have it upside down, uh, with the central pen logo in it. Uh, if if uh, my uh, viewer who purchased the one that was for sale last week didn't get the central pen branding, and I'm about to show you one that's for sale this week, uh, if you're interested in buying it, you won't get central pen branding. Sorry. <laughs> but I got it. And so I've been curious about this pen for a long time. I have a blog that I haven't really updated in a long time. But for a while, I was trying to keep it updated, so I had an entry on this pen. And uh, I went back, I guess it was this summer, I was just uh, checking comments and so on. Almost every comment was spam, so I don't know if anybody really looks at the blog, and since I don't update it, why would you? But uh, one of the comments was that this couldn't possibly be a central pen because it doesn't have central pen branding what I mean, what they meant by that was like this central pen, which we'll talk about the finish in a second, but it very clearly says, let's see if I can get this at a good angle for you to read. Whoa, this is difficult. Anyway, I'll read it to you because that, at least on my screen, looks really hard to read. Central pen 100143131. Uh, MyUberPens.com actually compared the finishes in their latest two sales of the this pen of the with this model. And it's kind of cool that I didn't buy this one through MyUberPens, but it's basically the same pen. Uh, you can see some differences in the celluloid. No two celluloids are going to be exactly alike. That's just a drawback to the material or a benefit to the material depending on your perspective. I see it more as a benefit because it makes each pen unique. But anyway, so I contacted them for permission to use their website. I learned a few neat things. 
So uh, they mentioned in their response to me, and by the way, they responded within less than 24 hours. They told me that they watch my videos. So here's this company, this big vintage fountain pen company that will watch my videos to pass the time when they're restoring pens or when they're uh, photographing pens. I thought that was really cool. I mean, I'm a little, I am a little fountain pen channel in rural North Dakota. And I know you're all saying, well, North Dakota by definition is rural. My part of North Dakota is rural compared to other parts of the state. Uh, so that is really cool. People in Macedonia watching it. But they gave me a little more information on the pens like this one. First of all, they, they emphasize that no two celluloids are exactly the same. So anybody looking to buy the one that I'm about to show you, don't expect this. Expect something like this, but not exactly the same. But then they said something else that was just, wow. They said usually when they get these, they are new old stock. What that means is, from how I interpreted their words, these are pens that are gifted to, <laughs> sorry, and this is their words too. Uh, these were expensive at the time, so they were only for the socialist aristocracy. Uh, which uh, some of the comments about this pen over the years seem to match that idea. But then uh, a lot of the owners of them were apparently not fountain pen users, so they would just store them. And then when their family gets them, their family sells them to uh, antique stores or to myoberpens.com. And then somehow they wind their way to myoberpens.com. Uh, they also had some information about the manufacturer, but because they're not certain of it, I'm going to not share it here. Uh, but it has to do with the barrels of these tend to be thicker than some other similar type pens. But anyway, it's just very interesting. Uh, and these, of course, have no branding. That's how they were sold. They were usually gifts. And I just find that fascinating. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually go visit the myuberpens.com website. So what you're looking at here is the newest listing for uh, the Centro Pen. So they're calling it a 1960 celluloid deep pearl brown Centro Pen, super flexible, fine to triple broad. If you look back at my writing sample, I don't know that I went to triple broad, but I'm also kind of scared that it'll go boing and it won't come back. So I didn't push it. The case is clearly not my case. It's a plain black case. As far as I can see, there's no branding in it. I'll get, come back to the pictures in a minute, but I asked permission to use this page. Uh, I will provide the link in the video description. So we'll look at their description here. One of the most beautiful Central Pen pens. Central Pen was one of the best Eastern Bloc pen companies. They still manufacture pens today, but their legacy is enormous. Today, Vintage Central Pens are considered some of the best in the world. One of the more famous brand names Central Pen used was Barclay, which I did not know that. That's new as of reading this description. These two pens here are not marked with the Central Pen, Central pen logo or brand, and that is why it is sometimes challenging to date and correctly identify some pens of the Eastern Bloc. Not marking the pens of the brand was sometimes done intentionally in some of the Eastern Bloc companies so they can share and provide pens to other companies, which can later brand or just sell them. This was usually done on the high-end flagship pens, which had much smaller customer base and where the smaller pen makers did not have the technology to make high-end luxury pens. For example, these two pens were sold by Taz Penkala from Croatia. By the way, I have a review of a pen from that company coming. Uh, it also came from myoberpens.com. But our central pen pens. In the last six photos, there's a direct comparison of this pen of, with a central pen. Oh, okay, I was wrong. Mine's a central pen 10014. Theirs is a 10012. But kind of the same idea, same material. They're comparing. Uh, so they're comparing it. 
The craftsmanship, the materials, the textures are identical on these two pens, even the patterns are similar. It's worth noting that no two pens are identical in their patterns as they were made from different casts of celluloid, and even if they were made from the same cast, the molting of the same cast is, has different shapes and patterns on different places in the same mold slash cast. So no two pens will ever be identical. And then it goes on to describe the pen, which uh, I've provided the link, so you read it for yourself. Uh, let's get a little eye candy. I'm in my basement, so the internet is slower here. <laughs> But uh, there, there's their, their listing for the pen. It shows the pen, the pencil, the case, in, inside the case, no branding. Lovely clear ink window. Mine has gotten kind of frosted. I think it's the lubricant used on the piston. I mean, it still writes well, so I'm not complaining, but it's not quite as clear as that. I'm a little uncomfortable with this picture, but they do know what they're doing. It's just not something I would ever do, so that's why I'm uncomfortable. But it shows the amount of flex you can get from this nib. And you'll notice the ISCO. Uh, that visitor to my blog suggested ISCO was a Yugoslavian company, and I have found no reference to that other than one comment on my blog. There's the pencil. I don't care about pencil so much, so we'll speed through that. Uh, the dissection of both. Dissected fountain pen. I guess they don't pull out the nib and feed or the um, ink mechanism. And here they're comparing to the 10012, which, my God, it looks just like my 10014, so... Somebody smarter than me will have to tell me the difference. So, back to the start. So, uh, one of the neat features of MyOberPens.com is that they have... They keep a list, their listings active, even after they sell a pen. The listing and all the information in it is kept active, so you can find it. Uh, you can find it... I wasn't originally going to do this, but they suggested, they suggested it under Sold Items. So I'm just going to click that real quick. We'll wait on my slow internet, because it's pretty fast upstairs, but here in the basement it's not. There we go. sometime all right so so while it's loading i'll just mention that uh i have purchased a lot of pens from them over the years i am ashamed i am definitely not going to click on them on what my account is to show you how much i've spent but i've bought a lot of pens from them the uh in in fact what you saw tonight the central pen of course was from them both cavecos were from them well, two of the three Kavecos. I guess I didn't get the Lilliput from them. And that's just tip of the iceberg. Uh, several, not all, but several of my uh, senators from, were from them. Some of the exotic, like the Geha, the Atlantis, the Pencala, all of them were from them. So, yeah, they have a wealth here of listings. This is the one that was sold to a viewer last week. Again, that's up to the viewer to bring it up. But, uh, yeah. But I'm not going to explore that listing. It's about like the listing I just showed you. This is the listing for the pen you saw me writing with tonight. This listing actually gives the model number right here. Um, a little bit less information here but they say one of the rarest and most beautiful original central pen pens the flagship 100820 model central pen and yeah they repeat a lot of the same stuff but interesting being an east block company they didn't save much on precious metals or other valuable materials thus their pens are ones of the highest quality and that is obvious and it goes on to mention the 
celluloid looks like glass, the uh, gold filled, not gold plated trim, the gold nib, of course, um, the ink window, and so on. And they talk a little bit about the pouch. But again, if you look, uh, this pen got me super excited. And again, slow internet. Here it is, photographed in Macedonia several years ago before I purchased it. Oh, by the way, clearly my pen didn't suffer from that treatment. But you may have noticed that I didn't treat it that way. I, I'm just too scared of destroying a wonderful, amazing nib. But that's the difference between a hobbyist like me and somebody who's a professional like the people at MyUberPens.com. I think I'm repeating pictures now, aren't I? Yeah, I'm repeating. No, I'm not, am I? Yeah, I am. Okay, enough of that. So that was kind of wild. Um, so I want to thank MyUberPens.com. Now, my practice, my general practice has been I don't endorse specific retailers. Uh, I, I don't like to get into the bad stories. I've had bad stories with several retailers. I told you a story about... Uh, an Aurora 88 once with uh, MyOverPens.com and how they bent over backwards to make it right. The fact that the German Postal Service destroyed it. Um, so I've been happy with MyOverPens.com, but I have no relationship with them. And uh, I don't plan on a relationship with any retailer. It's just uh, I'm a happy customer. And I just felt this is such a unique, special pen that I really... The fact that two of them came up within two weeks for sale... I felt should be marked and I should provide my viewers because I've raved about this pen and I've had those comments that, well, why do you even review pens we can never own? $295, it's yours. Uh, you saw what I paid. Uh, hopefully none of my students or colleagues or the taxpayers that pay my salary ever see that. But yeah, I, uh, I love this pen. When I... Look at my top three most expensive pens. I said this is the cheapest. It is by far the best of those three. It's an amazing pen. And that's why I'm doing this. I wouldn't do it for just any pen. But this one's really special. So, uh, yeah, if you missed your chance, here's another one. <laughs> so... Anyway, my thanks to MyUberPens.com for allowing me to use their website. I, I really thank them for the additional information on the pen. I hope that this late night rambling doesn't scare anybody off because I'm not at my best at night. I should have recorded this Sunday, but you didn't want to watch me sneezing and coughing through a video with the red nose and all the others. So here I am, Thursday night, uh, when I should be getting ready for bed, filming a pen video. But... Uh, I don't know, this, this right here is what really excites me about pen collecting. I think that's why I got so excited to do this. Uh, even though I probably would have been better off waiting till tomorrow after school before the football game starts. I just, I love those amazing discoveries you make. And I love the vintage pens that you pull them out and they're a piece of history and they really tell a story. This isn't telling a story of the common ordinary person like my family would have been if we would have stayed in Poland. This is telling the story of the socialist aristocrats, which <laughs> socialism is, isn't supposed to have those, but whatever, we all know human nature. But what a magnificent work of art this pen is and a true piece of history. If you look at my original review of the pen, which is also linked in the video description, I got into some of the history of Central Pen. Uh, this is a company that was created by the commun communist government of Czechoslovakia saying, hey, all you small manufacturers, let's go squoosh, and we'll just become one. Won't that be great? 
So that's what this was created by. And in the 1960s, those original artisans, those people who had those skills for those small pre-communist pen companies created this. And uh, yeah, what a work of art. So enough of that. Uh, I'm happy to say it's raining. We had a lot of rain today. Uh, it will be raining tomorrow. I am supposed to photograph the football game tomorrow night. I have the feeling I won't last through it, especially since I have been sick. And I can feel it in my throat right now, and I can hear it in my voice, even though, uh, you know, it's all filtered through my head. But I, I can hear in my voice the sick. So uh, I don't want to bring it back, so I'll probably leave the football game early. I go to almost every game school plays because they're my students and I don't know in a in some ways they're kind of like my kids but yeah but anyway I uh, look at these pens again trying to think of something clever to say and it's not coming to me so I'll just close with thank you my over pens for introducing me to some of these brands I never would have heard of living in rural North Dakota and I'm glad that somebody in rural North Dakota has brought something of value to you as well. Uh, so I thank you for watching. Uh, so if videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens, both new and old, and sometimes the exotic, I would invite you to subscribe. Uh, if you would like to talk about an interesting discovery, or perhaps an interesting pet you purchased from uh, myoverpens.com, or another vintage restorer, I would sure appreciate hearing that. So, thank you for watching. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.